no, 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 don't try to speak, Mr. Holmes. You'll want to save every breath you have. <laughs> Ichthys Theatre Productions presents The Kidnapping at Verney Station. Tonight's presentation is brought to you by Joshua Wall and the Crew Real Estate. Looking to purchase or invest in real estate? Better call Wall. Visit him at www.thecrewrealestate.com. I had received a note from Dr. Watson. He asked me to meet him at Verney Station instead of the dwellings at 221B Baker Street. It was a peculiar request as Verney Station is a rather quiet spot on the east-west link from Oxford to Cambridge. Good evening, Dr. Watson. Ah, there you are, my good man. Thank you for accommodating my unusual request. What brings us out here to Verney Station? A touch of theatrics. I think you will find tonight's story engaging, but it becomes all the more striking if I show you where it all unfurled. Here in Buckinghamshire, the Verney Station Junction. I notice there's not much of a station here, Dr. Watson, a lone shed. It is a rather remote junction. Indeed. This location sees very little traffic, which is why it was the perfect setting for a kidnapping. Kidnapping? Who was kidnapped? Oh, all in good time, my friend. Let us begin by taking a few steps back. Sherlock Holmes and I had been invited to a gala charity event at Dartmouth House near Berkeley Square. I was frankly surprised that Holmes had agreed to come with me, as he loathes the conventions of these kinds of social gatherings. But he suited up and we found ourselves holding two glasses of brandy, conversing with a new acquaintance of ours, Lady Angela Bancroft. Oh, Dr. Watson, you are so droll. Don't you think so, Mr. Holmes? As dry-witted as the Sahara, Lady Bancroft, one can almost taste the sand in one's mouth. <laughs> Shall we take this opportunity to dance, Lady Bancroft? They are playing a waltz. I would be honoured, Dr. Watson, but be forewarned... I'm not gifted on my feet. <laughs> then I will be sure to keep mine out of your way. <laughs> oh, Dr. Watson, you do make me laugh. Will you be all right by yourself, Mr. Holmes? All oh, this dryness has left me parched. I will find myself suitable refreshment, thank you. <laughs> I thought they would never leave. Excuse me? I brought you a glass of brandy, Mr. Holmes. Do we know each other, madam? Not yet, but I am an optimist. I hear tell that you are the greatest detective in all of England. Hyperbole, I assure you. By reputation, I have heard you can determine quite a bit about a person from the quickest of introductions. And so, I have come to introduce myself. I'm Clara Delano from the Minnesota Delanos. I doubt that very much. I beg your pardon. Oh. <laughs> The game has already begun. You are most certainly from the United States, but your vowels are not long enough to be that of a Minnesotan. You do not have that sing-songy timber that defines the region. I would guess you are from Florida. Very good. Tallahassee, to be exact. I also doubt you are from a family of long social standing. At the very least, you are not used to these types of gala events. Oh? You're unsteady on your heels. You have tugged at your collar several times, indicating your discomfort and the novelty of wearing an elaborate gown. You also appear to have trailed the sleeve of your garment through some sort of custard. My goodness, your attention to detail is remarkable. And while I enjoy brandy, I am drinking cognac tonight, not armagnac. Your reputation is indeed accurate. You now find yourself holding two glasses of brandy and are wondering if it is ladylike to drink both of them. I suspect that is not what you hoped for when you prayed it over here to introduce yourself. I cannot tell if you are charming or boorish. But why don't you ask me what you really wanted to ask me? 
I have never fancied taking the longest route to arrive at a destination. How eccentric you are, Mr. Holmes. But you are right. This is all a bit of a ruse to meet you and seek your help. Is your name truly Clara Delano? It is, but it does not come with any notable pedigree. When I spotted you chatting with the others, I knew I had to come to you about something rather delicate. Ah, the destination. We have arrived at the point of this conversation. I came to England to meet my fiancé. But instead of being greeted at the port of entry by him, I was handed an envelope by a messenger. The contents included a key to a hotel room at the Langham, a healthy sum of money, and an invitation to this gala. I was frankly taken aback. And when did you arrive in England? Two days ago, Mr. Holmes. The hotel room is lovely, and this beautiful gown that I'm now wearing was hanging in the closet. I deduced it was for this event, and I assumed I would meet my fiancé here. But he is not here. I have spent the last hour inquiring about him to no avail. That is when someone pointed out that you were here. You see, Mr. Holmes, no one seems to know my fiancé, and I will be honest, I'm... I'm not 100% sure of what he looks like myself. Excuse me? Ours has been a romance through correspondence. I've traveled here to meet him for the first time. Are you telling me he proposed and you accepted by post? I know it sounds ridiculous, but yes. And what is your fiancé's name, madam? James. James Moriarty. Well, now you have my attention. Is he known to you? Have you seen him tonight? Even if he were, madam, there is no guarantee that I would see him. This is the photograph he sent me last spring. It is very grainy. Is this the same James Moriarty? His face has been altered with a beard, but there is no mistake in the steely look in his eyes. You say he sent you this photo last spring? Yes. Well, one thing is for certain. This is a photo of James Moriarty. I feel there is something you are not telling me, Mr. Holmes. There is much I am not telling you, madam. The last I heard of your fiancé, he was safely locked in Newgate Prison. Prison? If you have never met this man, as you say, my advice would be to take the next ship back to America and consider yourself lucky. But he's my fiancé. Madam, there is nothing more I can do for you. I'm not going to help you find your fiancé. If that seems callous, I apologize, but I have my reasons. Good evening. <laughs> No need to apologize, Lady Bancroft. My toes are no worse for the misstep. I did warn you, Dr. Watson. Oh, say, where is Holmes? Excuse me, madam. I saw you chatting with Sherlock Holmes. Did you see where he went? He left. Rather abruptly. I don't understand why. Well, I suppose I will catch up with him later. I am Dr. John Watson. And this is Lady Angela Bancroft. Pleased to meet you. My name is Clara Delano. I don't know what I did to upset Mr. Holmes. I, I was telling him I was searching of my fiancé. And what is your fiancé's name? James Moriarty. Good Lord! Excuse me, Lady Bancroft, Miss Delano. I, I don't have time to explain, but I believe I should find out where Sherlock has gone. I, I bid thee good night. But Dr. Watson, I thought we could dance again. say anything about where he was headed, Mrs. Hudson. He said he was headed to see Briley at the Metropolitan Police Station. He took your Beaumont Adams revolver, Dr. Watson. Really? How odd. That old thing? Did he leave a note for me? If he did, he did not tell me. He was like a jackrabbit. Files are all scattered, Mrs. Hudson. He was not himself. One moment he was searching for the gun, then the letter opener, then muttering something about the Elphinstone Emerald. Yes, yes, it would appear our rather dangerous nemesis, James Moriarty, has surfaced once again. James Moriarty? We first encountered the scoundrel during that incident with Lady Anne Partington. There was a James Moriarty asking at the door earlier this evening. What? He was here? Just at the door. He was delivering an envelope. It's right over there on the mantel where I leave all the mail. Good Lord, Mrs. Hudson. Why didn't you say something to Holmes? I am not your secretary. And besides, Mr. Holmes was in such a state, I don't think he would have heard a word I said. Great Scott, Mrs. Hudson. 
It's a ransom note of sorts. A ransom note? You said Holmes was headed to see Briley at the Metropolitan Police Station. As far as I could make out, Dr. Watson, he was a bundle of prickly nerves and incoherent yammering. For all I know, he was off to see the Queen. Did he say anything about flypaper? Something sinister is afoot, Mrs. Hudson. I must be off to the Metropolitan Police Station. Oh, and keep the doors locked. Who's been kidnapped? telling you, Dr. Watson. He was here for just a moment. He was asking about a gentleman who escaped from prison nearly a year ago, James Moriarty. It had been kept out of the papers as it was an embarrassment to Newgate Prison. The Yard was keen to capture him. A year ago? Well, obviously they have failed. Did Holmes say where he was headed? Not a word, sir. But he told me to tell you to go to Bodleian Library. Dear Lord, did he say why? Not a hint, Dr. Watson. Oh. I have to be off immediately. Briley, I'm going to ask you a favor, but I do not have time to explain my full request. You have my word that it is of the utmost urgency. I will meet you back here in 30 minutes. Of course, Dr. Watson. What can I do for you? I need you to go to Langham Hotel and assemble as many men as you want. In case you were wondering, my mother named me after the Charlotte Bronte novel. But someone has that checked out right now. Well, um, thank you, Shirley. Um, But as I said, I am not looking for a novel. I would say, by the cut of your jib, that you may wish to explore our history department. You'll find that on the upper level. (laughs) Well, I am not looking for history books, either. Perhaps the academic... I am not even looking for a book. How odd. You really the library, do not. I am inquiring about my friend, Sherlock Holmes. And what kind of books does he write? There are no Sherlock Holmes books. He is a detective, and I have been led to believe that he might be here. <laughs> we do not index people who come into the library. I was hoping perhaps that you saw him searching the rows of books. He is rather tall, black hair and grey eyes, thin lips, And a hot, light nose. No, I don't recall seeing a gentleman like that. Well, then I am baffled. I did, however, see a rather tall man here early in the day. Quite thin, very pale, copper-coloured hair. Oh? And do you remember what books he was looking at? Yes, indeed. He left a terrible mess. And he tore a section of a page from one of our most valuable encyclopedic volumes. That's not your friend, is it? Rest assured, that is not my friend. But I have a good idea who it was. I reported him to my supervisor. Uh, Would you mind if I looked at the book he damaged? I suppose that would be all right. Here it is. It appears to be an article on reversal agents. This book is beyond repair. Shameful. Thank you, Shirley. Uh, you, You have been most helpful. But I haven't done anything. There you are, Dr. Watson. I was beginning to worry. Did you ever catch up with Holmes? No. I was either a step behind him, or he was never at the library. You said to wait for half an hour. It's been nearly 40 minutes. I was delayed because after the library... I paid a quick visit to see an old friend, Dr. Sherenford. The apothecary on Barlow Street? Now retired, but his knowledge may prove invaluable. How so? In saving a life. Saving a life? Read this, Inspector Briley. Kidnapped? But that's not possible, Dr. Watson. We'll continue with the kidnapping at Verney Station in just a moment. Tonight's presentation is brought to you by Joshua Wall and the Crew Real Estate. Looking to purchase or invest in real estate? Better call Wall. Visit him at www.thecrewrealestate.com. I don't suppose you're going to tell me who was kidnapped, are you, Dr. Watson? All in due course. Uh, Standing in that police station... 
My main concern was that James Moriarty was up to something more sinister than an abduction. But what does that have to do with this train depot? Why are we out here at Fernie Station Junction? <laughs> patience, patience. Inspector Briley read over the ransom note. The note was filled with vague, intriguing puzzles. But most ominously, the final words of the note led us to believe that Sherlock Holmes was in grave peril. Like a fly drawn to flypaper, the great ones shall gasp their last in Claydon's vapor. Rather ominous, Dr. Watson. But what does it mean? It means Sherlock Holmes is in trouble. I need to catch the rail service to Verney Station post-haste. I bought you a ticket as you requested, and the train is being held. But why on earth are you going to Verney Station? As you know, I have always had an interest in 18th century architecture. And Verney Station is the end of the rail line, situated not far from Claydon House. Ah, so this sentence about the last gasp in Claydon's vapour. I believe James Moriarty means to do Holmes mortal harm. But what of this nonsense about a fly to fly paper? If there was time, I would suggest you visit Dr. Sherenford on Barlow Street. But, unfortunately, we must act quickly. Please assemble your men immediately. I must be off to catch the train. Mm-hmm. You see, Mr. Holmes, I've been studying you and your comrade, Dr. Watson. The papers often highlight your escapades. And the one trait you each share is an unhealthy curiosity for solving riddles. <laughs> I've no doubt that the good doctor is on his way here even as we speak. <laughs> Struggle all you like with the ropes, they're too tightly bound even for you. Oh, by the way, do you mind if I keep your lovely pistol? I found it in your jacket. We'll call it a memento of our final meeting. You should start to feel the effects of the poison very soon. It's slow acting. I want you to be cognitive of what happens on the train platform above us. I want you to hear the horror in Dr. Watson's voice as he realises he's been lured to his death. I want you to hear his body hit the boards of the platform, all the while knowing that there's nothing you can do about it. (laughs) Well, I must admit I am intrigued to know your thoughts, Sherlock. I'm afraid your last words will be muffled. Shortly after you hear Dr. Watson take his last breath, you'll find yourself slipping off into the darkness, into the hands of the ravenous raper. Mm. Save your strength, Mr. Holmes. Adrenaline will only make the poison act more quickly. Well, I must prepare for the good doctor. Time may be an abstract, but it's certainly the only thing that matters to you now, Mr. Holmes. Good evening. Why are you... I'm headed to Verney Station, just as you are. How did you... Come, sit, please. You don't seem surprised to see me. Not at all. I was the one who had Briley's men escort you here. It was not open for debate. They made it quite clear. Don't be coy, Miss Delano. You were going to be on this train anyway. I was just making sure we shared the same cabin. And why would you do that? To discuss your plans. My plans? I have no idea what you're talking about. No more facade, Miss Delano. I can see the outline of a pistol hidden in your handbag. I would imagine you brought it with you to assure that I do not interrupt your agenda. You will think me evil, but I had no choice. All in the service of your fiancé, I suppose. James Moriarty is not my fiancé. He is my tormentor. But you are doing his bidding. I am being forced to do his bidding. Forced? I was an actress with a small theater company in Cumnor. I came over here about nine months ago from the United States. Suffice to say, I became entangled with the manager of the job and ended up jobless, penniless, and without a place to live. James Moriarty, posing as a patron of the theater, offered to be my benefactor. I was reluctant at first, but his motivation seemed almost puritanical. He set me up at the Langham Hotel while I continued to look for work. That was until last week. 
He approached me with a devilish plan. I was to meet Mr. Holmes at the Dartmouth House soiree with a fabricated story about being Moriarty's fiance. I was to offer Mr. Holmes a brandy laced with a slow-releasing poison. Diabolical! Moriarty assured me no permanent harm would come to Mr. Holmes, but that he would be taught the lesson, so to speak. I am ashamed of my actions, but I owed Moriarty a great deal of money. And so you gave Holmes a drink laced with metallic arsenic? No, that's the thing. Mr. Holmes refused my drink and raced out of the room at the mere mention of James Moriarty. That was just before I met you earlier this evening. Indeed. That is right. I saw you holding the two glasses of brandy. Holmes didn't drink the brandy. My trip to visit Dr. Shellenford wasn't necessary. I am not following. Dr. Shellenford is an old friend. When I discovered that Moriarty had torn out some pages from a book in the library, pages concerning reversal agents and antidotes, I raced to see Shellenford immediately. I assumed the poison was metallic arsenic because of a rather cryptic ransom note I received about flypaper. Flypaper contains metallic arsenic. Dr. Shellenford gave me a vial of a reversal agent, but thankfully we won't need it. So the powder I put in the brandy was deadly? Yes. Moriarty lied to you, Miss Delano. His aim is to kill Sherlock Holmes. I am such a fool. Perhaps you should give me your pistol now. The gun was not for you, Dr. Watson. It's not what you imagined. The bullets in this pistol are for Moriarty. For Moriarty? Yes. I am ashamed of my behavior and realize just how foolish I had been when I returned to the Langham Hotel. I know it would put me in prison the rest of my days, but I was going to shoot Moriarty. Oh, here. Take the gun. I will speak to Inspector Briley. In light of your actions now, I believe there is cause for leniency. The true mastermind to this horrible event is James Moriarty. Can you forgive me, Dr. Watson? You were duped, Miss Delano. The real question is, how did Holmes end up being kidnapped by Moriarty? Upon the mention of his name, Holmes would have been on high alert. Thankfully, you disposed of the brandy. Well... Only in a fashion, Dr. Watson. You don't mean... Yes. Quickly, before the crowd disperses, hide behind that pillar. I beg of you, listen carefully. Your life may depend on it. We are alone now. I know you are here. And I know you have poisoned Sherlock Holmes. This is hardly a kidnapping, Moriarty. On the train, I reread your so called ransom note. I do not believe you ever had any intent of bartering for Sherlock Holmes' life. This was all a ruse to lure me here to Verney Station. Your end goal is to kill us both. Then why did you bother coming, Doctor? (laughs) (laughs) I see you have my Beaumont Adams revolver. Yes, a gift courtesy of the great detective. Where is he now? Beneath my feet, where he belongs. You mean... Safely tucked away into a space below this utility shed. He can hear you, Dr. Watson, but suffice to say, he's incapacitated. But he can hear every word we utter. So, what is your game, Moriarty? Oh, well, it's quite simple, Dr. Watson. For you and Sherlock Holmes to die. It's not me that has a fancy for games. It's you and the illustrious sleuth who have an unnatural affection for clues and puzzles. One needs only set a piece of cheese into a maze to see the two of you react with fervor. Child's play. You see, Dr. Watson, as the next train arrives, you will fall onto the tracks, meeting with a rather 
painful and horrible death. And all the while, Holmes will hear the screeching of the rails, your final moments. Mm. And you expect me to cooperate? Oh no, I expect you to resist. But you will also consider this. If you do not jump in front of the train, your dear Mrs. Hudson will be anything but safe. I have another vial of metallic arsenic. I would assume you'd prefer if I do not use it on her. And if need be, I now have some insurance. Your revolver pointed at your back. Do not test my resolve, Dr. Watson. And what of Clara Delano, your fiance? Oh, please. She's nothing but a second-rate actress, more than willing to perform a task or two for her freedom. She was found dead. In her hotel room earlier tonight, she had hung herself. Well, then I no longer have a fiancé. <laughs> well, that certainly ties up any loose ends. She left a note all about the mastermind of her undoing, James Moriarty. Well, bravo for her. She had more wits about her than I realized. Nonetheless, she is dead, and I am still here. You are the epitome of evil. Oh, should I mourn her, Doctor? She was but a peasants. Why go to all this trouble, Moriarty? Why not show up to the soiree and shoot us there? Folly, Dr. Watson. I'm already a wanted man. And even though you doubtlessly have Scotland Yard on their way, I will easily slip from Verney Station to Freedom. Why risk the mob at a soiree? No, this is a much more satisfying personal drama. You, me, Holmes, a private farewell. Ooh! Perhaps not such a private farewell. Clara, stand away. He has a gun. Yes, I heard everything. He means to use it on you. Very good, Dr. Watson. You had me convinced with your fabricated tale of her suicide. But it won't do you any good. It just means that I'll have to kill all three of you with his pistol. You mean all three of us? Holmes? Wait, what? Miss Delano assisted me. And while you found my gun, you did not find the letter opener. She made a quick job of cutting through the ropes. He gives me too much credit. He was nearly free all by himself. What foolishness, Holmes. My plans may have to change, but your blood is filled with metallic arsenic. You'll be dead very shortly either way. Even with the antidote your companion found to counter the poison. And how did you know that I found the antidote? Oh, maybe because I wanted you to find it, Doctor. Why else did I so carelessly tear a page from a library book about reversal agents? Mice in a maze. Gentlemen, mice in a maze. There is just one problem with your maze, Moriarty. And what is that, my dear fiancé? Sherlock Holmes was never in the maze. And what does that mean? I never took the poison. Clara Delano did, because of her shame. Fortunately, I administered the antidote to her while you were on the train to Verney Station. I will be ill for a number of days, but according to Dr. Watson, I will survive. <laughs> None of you will survive. I'm the one holding the revolver. And I can see there are six bullets in the chamber. But will you be able to shoot fast enough to stop all three of us, Moriarty? Well, why don't we find out? With you first, Holmes. Well, what happened? You're standing right in front of me here at the same train station. So, obviously, Moriarty did not get off all his shots. He did not get off any shots. You see, Holmes took my old Beaumont Adams revolver for a reason. The gun jammed over three years ago. And to make sure it was even more useless, Holmes stuffed a bit of cloth down the barrel. When Moriarty fired the gun, all it did was successfully blow up in his face. Not enough to cause him any permanent harm, but it gave me a window of opportunity to subdue him. Holmes tied Moriarty up with the same rope that had recently been around his wrists and ankles. 
Briley and his officers arrived a short time later, and Moriarty is back in Newgate Prison. But why and how did Holmes get out to Verney Station in the first place? It was all in the so-called ransom note. It started with the phrase, I have kidnapped the mind of Dr. Watson. Holmes knew it was a trap, but it was a trap he was ready to deal with. He picked up on the same clues I did about the flypaper and Verney Station. As Clara Delano said, Holmes never entered the maze. He just worked around it, snagging Moriarty in his own trap. And whatever happened to Clara? It took her some time to recover from the metallic arsenic she digested. Briley considered that punishment enough. No charges were laid, and about a month later she boarded a ship back to Minnesota. You mean Florida? (laughs) Yes, yes. We received a wire that she found a job in acting and is gainfully employed. Tonight's presentation was brought to you by Joshua Wall and the Crew Real Estate. Looking to purchase or invest in property? Better call Wall. www.thecrewrealestate.com Tonight's presentation featured Sean Houck as Sherlock Holmes, Bruce Farley as Dr. Watson, Catherine Taylor as Lady Bancroft, Christine Fortner as Clara, Catherine Camp Painter as Mrs. Hudson, Jessica Tooten as Shirley, Ralph Tooten as Briley, and Will Warren as James Moriarty. Original music by Stuart Smith, written and directed by Martin Smith. Be sure to consider donating to Ichthys Theatre Productions. See the link on the screen or visit GoFundMe and search for Ichthys Theatre Productions. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out all the other Sherlock Holmes episodes and much more.